Yesterday we dealt with congruence. We dealt with um, how do we find missing side lengths and angle measures um, when I know I have two equal, uh, two equal polygons. So today we're going to talk about how do we get those polygons? How do we, uh, how do we move those objects around so that we end up with uh, the, correct sh the, the correct shape? So, um, or similar shapes, because if you know how it's moving around, sometimes it's a lot easier to write the congruence statements. Um, so you're not going to discuss this with your partner, but just think about this for a second. Um, what are the differences? You have to think back to chapter 7. If I dilate an object, what are the different uh, things that could happen to that object? Um, well, there are three things that could happen. The first thing is that it could just stay the same. Okay, so let's write scale factor equals 1. All right. Um, the other thing that could happen is that our object, if I take this here, our object can get bigger, right? So it can stay the same. Could get bigger. Which, if I did that, would be a scale factor bigger than 1. Greater than 1. The other thing that could happen is that our object could get smaller. Get bigger, get smaller, or stay the same. And that would be a scale factor of less than one. The reason I bring up uh, so it get smaller or reduce was the word we used for that. Reduce, enlarge, or preserve. The reason I bring this up uh, is because that a dilation is a type of transformation, which we're going to be examining. It's a type where we change the size but not the shape. The other transformations we're going to talk about today are going to be those that do not change the size, they don't change the shape, they just change where that object is. It moves it around, but it doesn't change the size or the shape. It keeps them congruent. Um, so, uh, if we had a negative scale factor, what do we think would happen? Um, well, just thinking about it, it's easy to, to kind of guess and make predictions, but let's take a look at uh, the triangle you have on your note sheet there. Um, we're going to write the old coordinates, and we're going to multiply everything by negative 1. The reason we're going to multiply by negative 1 is because we want to see if we have a negative scale factor. Remember scale factor, we multiply everything uh, by that number. Um, so I don't want to multiply it by 2 or 3 or whatever, because that's going to change the size. But if I multiply it by negative 1, we're really going to see the effect of a negative on the shape itself. So first thing I need to do is write the old coordinates. My old coordinates are, let's see, I have 2, 1, I have uh, 6, 1, I need to write these down too, and I have 4, 6. Okay, then these, when I multiply each of them by negative 1, notice what happens, negative 2, or 2, 1 becomes negative 2, negative 1. 6, 1 becomes negative 6, negative 1. And 4, 6 becomes negative 4, negative 6. They stay the same, but we ju they just become their opposites. If I graph those, notice where they end up. Okay, negative 2, negative 1 is right there. Negative 6, negative 1 is right there. And negative 4, negative 6 is down there. So for a scale, a scale factor of negative 1, we end up with our triangle moving all the way over here. Uh, what kind of transformation is this? Well, you've called it a uh, turn before at Boyce. The real word for it is a rotation. What I've done is I've taken my triangle and I have rotated it all the way over to here. But it's rotated not around itself. Okay. What I've done is notice where I've rotated it. Try and draw this in here. I've rotated it this point and all the way to there. Came negative two, negative one. Six one became negative six, negative one. Notice those are all, if I could draw better, those are half circles. And notice what it looks like they're rotating around. They're all rotating around the origin. Okay, so this is a special type of rotation. It's a rotation around zero, zero. So if I wanted to do a rotation around zero, zero, what I would do is I would just multiply everything by negative one. OK, 
Okay, so keep that in mind because you're going to have to do that uh, later. Okay, take every point, multiply it by negative 1, and that's going to give you a rotation. Let's play around with this a little bit. What if I only multiplied the x coordinates by negative 1? Okay, so we're on the second page of your note sheets here. Okay, if I only multiply the x coordinates by negative 1, if I only multiply my x coordinates by negative 1, I'm going to end up with negative 2, 1, negative 6, 1, and negative 4, 6. Notice if the y coordinate is going to stay the same. Think about what that's going to look like, what that means. If the y coordinate stays the same, that means I'm not moving up or down. So try to predict where this triangle is going to end up. If it's not moving up or down, it's just going to move. Notice it's going to move from the positive x's to the negative x's, from the right side to the left side. Let's go ahead and graph it. Uh, 2, 1 becomes negative 2, positive 1. 6, 1 becomes negative 6, positive 1. And 4, 6 becomes negative 4, positive 6. It looks like the same, uh, it looks like the same triangle, but remember, this one has gone to here, and this one has gone to here, so we have actually reflected this. This is a reflection. It um, probably be a little bit easier to see um, if I took the triangle and reflected it across the y-axis. Think about what I would have to do to my coordinates to do that. This is a reflection. I did a reflection across the um, across the y-axis. But what if I reflected across the x-axis? That would mean I'd have to move down here. Okay, I have to flip it across this line right here, which means I would end up one unit down. Okay, let's just look at what would happen. Well, that means my y values are now becoming negative. My x values are staying positive. I go ahead and graph those. I end up with uh, 2, 1 becomes 2, negative 1. 6, 1 becomes 6, negative 1. And 4, 6 becomes 4, negative 6. If I connect those dots, it's a little bit easier to see that this is a reflection. This time, I reflect it across the x-axis. Okay, so if I want to reflect across the y-axis, I change the x values because I want to go from side, I want to flop from side to side. I want to go across the, the x-axis, I change the y values. It's kind of backwards, just because this is like a mirror, right? A mirror, things move backwards than what you would expect them to. Same thing here. One more to talk about. The other type of transformation we haven't discussed yet is a tr uh, translation. Uh, you called it a slide before. Now it's a translation. Um, what would we have to do to move our triangle down three units? Well, think about this. If I go down three units, which coordinate am I changing, x or y? If I go down, that means I'm changing uh, my y value. Change the color here. So uh, if, and if I go down, I'm subtracting 3, minus 3 from y. Okay, and that's from the y coordinate. If I go up three units, I'm going to add three to y. Okay, so my new coordinates would be then if I have uh, I have these three coordinates, and I want to go down three. This is going to become two, two negative negative two because one minus three is negative two. Six. Keep forgetting my parentheses. Six, negative two, and four, three. Okay, that's if I go down three. Notice where that ends up. I end up at uh, two, one becomes two, negative two, right there. Uh, six, one becomes six, negative two, and um, four, six becomes four, three. Just like that. And notice that would be moving it down one two, three. Okay? If I wanted to go up three, then this would become two, five. Uh, six, one would become six, five. And four, six would become four, nine, which is somewhere up here. And there you have it. 
Okay? Now, let's talk about moving right and left. Moving right and left. If I move right or left, that means that my uh, x value is changing. If I move to the right, it's getting bigger, which means if I want to go to the right, I need to add plus sign, add 3 to the x coordinate. So then this would become, to the x coordinate, 2 plus 3 is 5. And notice the y coordinate stays the same. 6 plus 3 is 9. Y, uh, the y coordinate stays the same. I'm not moving up or down. I'm moving side to side. You have to think about which coordinate will change, is gonna, which coordinate is going to affect which way you move. Um, if I want to move to the left, I don't want to add three units. I want to subtract three because if I'm going to the left, my units are getting smaller. So I'm going to subtract three in this sort of time we're going from the x coordinate. So this is going to be negative 1, 1, 3, 1, and 1, 6. I'm just subtracting that from these values there. One more little short thing, okay? Uh, again, these are the three types of transformations that uh, create congruent images. Remember that dilation creates similar figures, not congruent figures, similar figures. So for a dilation, you need proportions. For congruent figures, congruent images, you just need a congruence statement. Okay, uh, translating without, this is translating freehand. Um, when you translate without the, uh, without the coordinate plane, it is a little bit more difficult. First of all, if we have to dissect kind of what this means. This says translate. You can read that as slide, right? Slide is the word you used before. So we're going to slide this shape along AB. So we're going to slide along this side right here. Okay, so we're sliding down that way so that A prime coincides. Coincides is a big word that means matches up with. Okay, and remember that A prime means new A. Okay, so that goes with that. Coincides means matches up with. Remember, write that down. So A prime, the new A needs to land on B. Okay, so... That means we can go ahead and put one point here, okay? And we'll call that A prime. Now, B prime, if I'm moving down in that direction, B prime needs to move down as well the same amount and in the same direction. I have to keep that line the same. I don't know, can I estimate here? B prime is going to be about right there. And let's go ahead and connect those dots. A prime, B prime should be the same length as uh, AB. So A, and then this is B prime. So I already have one side, okay? Now, the tricky part is figuring out where to put C. C is also going to move down the same amount in the same direction. It's going to move off in this angle here. The easy way to do that is to keep this angle A the same. Remember, congruent objects, the angles all have to stay the same. So if I kind of grab this and match the angle A from above, okay? And then I want to kind of keep BC the same length. Kind of move that down that way and eh, maybe a little longer here. It's not going to be perfect. None of us are Picasso. But you get the general idea. There is... C prime. You want to get close. The main idea here is that you want to keep all your angles and all your side lengths the same. Now on your note sheet you're going to see uh, these questions here. Don't worry about that. Those are the questions you're going to see on your um, your transformations uh, assessment there.